Now, modest apparel means that the woman is not attracting sexual attention. She's not showing off her butt, back, belly, oh, or breast. Let me tell you about butt, baby. Let me get you straight. So godly women must adorn themselves in modest apparel. This truth must be pushed throughout the state of South Carolina by all means necessary. Our people are in desperate need of God's laws out here. We're the men to stand boldly to get the job done against all opposition that standeth in our way. And opposition will come. In fact, it's already here. Every day we put our lives on the line to save our people. Exactly. And that's even in the midst of all the opposition that come our way. But this is our mission. It doesn't matter how we feel or what we think. We all have our own issues. But who's gonna rise up when the Most High calls? It's time to gather the saints from Columbia to Spartanburg, Charleston to Myrtle Beach. We hit the streets for the lost sheep. So men of war, gather yourselves together. Let's get ready for battle. Strap your boots, no excuse, let's push this through. Whether it's two by two or the whole crew, get ready, we coming through. We are not a hate group. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel, united in Christ, is a non-violent, Bible-based movement. IUIC. And guess what? What is she, this? This is another part of the, the problem. My family right here. When we don't have a solution, when we don't have a solution, what do we typically do? We run. We run away knowing that we don't have the solution instead of asking someone how to fix the problem. But God has given us the solution. He's giving us the lie. God has given us the game on who's been deceiving us for a long time. All we got to do is obey. What you about to say? Yes. And then when you asked them to point to uh, Jesus was, they went straight to the white man instead of going to the black person. Right. Uh, and she, that's, that's were, what. I think that's probably what triggered Get 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. We're going to come back. We're going to come back. And she didn't tell the kids about nothing. And then they're showing what they know from, I guess, what household they came from. Good. So that's why she got offended. You're making a great point. So, I mean, Let's go to the Bible on that. I didn't know why she got upset. Because that person right. seemed like she was cool. Then she came back. Exactly. I was wondering, so why, what made you it's the truth that triggers our people. So watch this. I want you to see it. People don't like the truth, but the truth helps you grow. Right. Watch this. And the truth has to be acknowledged within you enough to change. Watch this. Read. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Examine yourself. So you hear that. That's what we all have to do. All of these men, you see, we, we cannot stand up here and be hypocrites and say we have no sin. Right. The thing that, that is going to be applied is when we recognize our sin and examine ourselves, we go to the scriptures, we go to amongst the men of understanding and say, hey, I need to fix this problem within myself. What scriptures you got to show me how to really apply that thing? Read it again. Examine yourself. That's what happens and that's where we start to have a problem. My brother right here, what we're teaching right now is our national according to the Bible. We're teaching against the lies that our people have learned. A lot of our people out here are in sin, but they got to examine themselves. Read it again. Examine yourself, uh -huh. whether ye be in the faith. So a lot of our people think they're in the faith, but when the Bible gets open and things get exposed, we got to realize, oh, I've been learning lies. So I need to understand the faith a little bit better. Read on. Examine yourselves, whether uh -huh. ye be in the faith. Go ahead. Prove your own self. Go ahead. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobate. So reprobate goes into being void of judgment. Right. When we don't have God's laws in our minds, right. we do become void of judgment. Right. That, that's what happens. That's the whole point of learning, see? You can't do right. your mind law. Because when you get new information, then you look at what you learned before, and then you apply that. That's a good point. What do we need to we do? All need to do this, is what, this is the vineyard. That's where we all need to be out here. Whose vineyard is this? It's Jesus' vineyard. He it's Jesus'. It. What color is Jesus, my sister? I want to know. According to the Bible, what color is Jesus? Uh huh. And he's a so-called black man. That is correct. Now, what did he teach, and how does he want his people to govern themselves? 
Jesus ain't never went up on the um went to school for all this and stuff. Right. Jesus set up, went on but did he read the Bible? Yes, he did. He did read the Bible. Yes, he sure did. So in reading the Bible, certain understanding has to come forth. Yes. Certain application has to come forth to benefit the people, right? Right. So where do we, that I like that. Psalm 111, verse 10. Where do we get the wisdom and knowledge from? From Jesus. All right. So where did Jesus get the wisdom and knowledge from? Right. But we just said, what did he read? He read the scriptures. He read the scripture. Y'all want, want me to prove that? Watch this. Get that in Luke 4, verse 18. I'm going to show you that Jesus read the scriptures. Bring it out. Prophets before him, and he was teaching God's laws in the midst of all of them. So watch this. I need to, just, just hold on. Hold tight. Hold tight. I want you to hear this. Read. Luke chapter 4, verse 16. Right. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, as his custom was, the customs go into the laws of God that were before him and written about through the prophets before him. Read on. Right. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. So keeping the Sabbath day holy is still a part of believing in Christ. Right. Today is the Sabbath day. There should be no more buying and selling. There should be no working. No, none of that. Y'all understand that? Is that making sense? It's really Saturday. Right. But in the Christian church, underneath the white man, he changed it. So hold on. We're going to finish. We're going to finish. Hold on. Read on. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. To do what? To read. So Christ went in the synagogue on the Sabbath day to read. What is he reading? Read on. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. So he was reading out of the book of Isaiah on the Sabbath day. He was reading because Isaiah was a prophet in a time before him. Read. And he and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, uh -huh. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. So Isaiah, that prophet before Christ, actually had portions of the gospel that were speaking about the fulfillment that was going to come through Christ. So watch this. Let's go back to Moses as well. Because if we believe on Christ, we will believe Moses too. So, I got you. And I want, because, all oh, praise to the most high. Marisha, Marisha. Lord willing, you come by the school, bro. Quadre, come by the school. Y'all got the flyer? There's an address, call the number, and learn to, hey, come repent with it. Yes, sir, the address is on there. So, my sister right here, you said that we are the church. We are the church, and the Holy Ghost should dwell within us, right? So let's let's deal with church real quick. Church, Who, is a building. church is a building. No, it's not. According to the Bible, watch this. And, and what we're doing is we're going into the scriptures because a lot of times our people have learned lies. We've learned a lot of. This is round one of the lie. After that, there's so many other things that go along with it. So we just showed you that on the Sabbath day it was Saturday, right? So the white man showed us that the Sabbath day is every day. That's not factual. I want you to read what you got. Read. Acts chapter 7 verse 37. Bring it up. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel. Are you listening my sister? I'm listening. The church? I'm listening. The church? Okay. Read. A prophet shall the Lord your, your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall you hear. So watch this. What is that talking about? As far as the church. What are we about to read into since you say you know this? What is it talking about? Who is the church? Because you had it wrong. We are the church. I thought you said the church was a building. No, but I, what, what I'm saying is that building, what they built, that say church, uh -huh. church is here. Church is the children of Israel. Let me show you this. Did you get to that point yet? Watch this. Read that. Verse 38. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness. So this is recapping Moses. Moses was in the church in the wilderness. Who was in the wilderness with Moses? Who was Moses leading in the wilderness? The children of Israel. So my brothers right here. I've seen you before. I've seen you before as well. So what we're continuing to teach is the laws of God. How to repent. Who we are as God's people. We are the Israelites. But what we have learned in these last days is lies and sin. So watch this. We've covered this earlier. You say you know the Bible, correct? How does God want his daughters to dress? And we've been dealing with this for a little bit. First of all, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is there a dress code? To me. To you, no to God. I, I, I specifically said, how does God want you to dress? 
Okay, so watch this. I'm going to show you how God wants you to carry yourself like a lady. Get 1 Timothy 2 and 9. First, you already know? So what does 1 Timothy 2 and 9 say about how the sister should dress? I'm asking. I'm asking. My brother's right here. How, does a, how is a woman supposed to dress? Does anybody know how is a woman supposed to dress? According to godly statutes. How? How? Read it. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. Read out. In like manner also that the woman adorn themselves in modest apparel. Now, modest apparel means that the woman is not attracting sexual attention. She's not showing off her butt, back, belly, oh, or breast. let me tell you about butt, baby. Let me get you straight. Hey. Oh, we ain't gonna go there. Let what me, we're talking about is what God just said. Hey, let me tell you what Read it again. In like manner also that the woman adorn themselves in modest apparel. So godly women must adorn themselves in modest apparel. You are a princess, but you can't be... Matter of fact, you, you ever heard of Sarah Bartman? You ever heard of Cardi B, Megan Thee Stallion? Because these are the modern day Sarah Bartmans. These are the modern day uh, freak shows that American society gets off on seeing being put on TV. But it's always black, Hispanic, and Native American women being shown off with protruding buttocks. But God says the way to protect yourself is to dress modestly. Because what happens is when you're showing off your body as a woman, you're actually degrading your father. You're degrading your heavenly father. A lot of these women say, I'm married to Christ, but you're degrading Christ because Christ wants you to dress modestly. But we say we know God, but when it comes to his commandments, we don't want to do them. So watch this. Read on. With shame faceness. You saw how she turned around when we said uh, buttocks. She was like, you, I know you see all this. Face that means saying, you would know how to God cover bless, up. God bless me with this ass. And he no, wants I you to cover it up. What, <laughs> my sister. The real I would be, it, it's, it, it's not funny. This is what we have to fix amongst our people. We have to stop wanting to be degraded. I, I, I can't stand seeing my people at the bottom of society. I don't like seeing my people being played over and, and other nations making billions of dollars off of our stupidity. And, and guess what? I'm, I'm going to just keep it real. A lot of the stupidity amongst our nation is set in order with our women. I'm tired of our women being played over and then we taking the blame for it. So what does God want us to do? Fix it by reading his word. Read it again. In like manner also that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So we're reading what God wants. The woman should not wear pants. She should adorn herself in modest apparel so that she's not attracting sexual attention. Therefore, we can stop single parent households. We don't need SNAP EBT. We got a father in the household. We have a full family. Marriage is honorable. Our society is secure. But nowadays, hold your peace, sis. Nowadays, what we see amongst our sisters is many generations of the Section 8 household to where now our own women say, even though I had a son, I don't need no man. So now she's going to perpetuate that message to other young women and now her son is going to become useless. But God wants us to set things in order. So watch this. When a woman does this, for I want you to get Isaiah 3 and 12 because we're going to deal with the woman. I need you to take your hat off because you already understand some of these laws. Why are we dealing with the woman? Because we got three women here. God is dealing with his nation, but we can be specific so that everybody can get help. Is that is not, not practical? Deal with y'all. Right? Deal with our men. We are going to deal with the okay. men. We're dealing with how men should teach the women to set our nation back in order. That's right. So watch this. This is an effect when our women are off doing what they want to do and not having a man to lead over them. The beginning of this chapter talks about how when we disobeyed God, God took away all the strong men, all the mighty men, the men of understanding. That is a punishment. So when there is no man in the house, no man to govern the women, our women don't realize how foolish they are becoming. Right. Because guess who's leading the household? White Jesus, white supremacy, white government. Now, 
I want you to hold your peace because now what does our community look like when the black, black woman has white government in her mind? Read. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12. Bring it out. As for my people. God says as for my people, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Read. Children are the oppressors. What do we call that when children oppress the neighborhoods that they come into? What do we call that? Thugs. Gangs. Right? Some of our young men, because they don't have a purpose or don't find a purpose in their neighborhood, they go off into homelessness, jail systems, homosexuality. It says, as for my people, children are their oppressors. What I need y'all to do is listen to, I want y'all to listen to the words of God. Because the black woman has gotten caught up and caught slipping by listening to other black women. And ungodly black women at that. <laughs> Read on. And women rule over them. So women, watch this, my sister in the yellow dress. My sister in the yellow dress. My sister right here, I didn't get your name. But what I want you to do, this, watch this, I need you to pay attention. Because she's hearing the word of God, but she's trying to deceive you. That's what's going on. What is God saying? He's showing us why we have gangs in our neighborhood. He's showing us that women are at the root of it. So what are we going to do with God's word? Are we going to apply it or are we going to open our mouth and talk against it? Read it again. That's for my people. Children are the oppressors. Children have become our oppressors. Why? And women rule over them. Ungodly women rule over them. Read on. Oh my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err. So God knows best. He says, they which lead thee, they that are trying to teach you, leading you to error. Why does she justify herself with men but can't prove herself to God? Right. That is a problem. God just said her dress is immodest. She turned around and said, well, God gave me all this behind. I'm going to flaunt it. So what? who are you flaunting it for when God says be modest and cover it up? God says that the woman should, his daughters, the princesses of the earth, should be modest. What's wrong with that? Why do we argue against these things? You want to know why we argue against it? Because the white man has been beating the black man down so long that she's comfortable no, with that. No. And guess what? She's comfortable with the results that come out of it. So watch this. Watch this. I'm going to ask you this question. I'm going to ask this question. Y'all stop saying the white man. Any of y'all in the medicine? The ain't got y'all mind. You in the medicine? The uh, Tuskegee syphilis experiment. Who brought that into the black community? Bring it out. But who did? Whose hand did they put the experiment in, though? Bring it out. The black what? Right. Black woman. Right. There was a black woman that those white doctors gave that that charge to, and she went and gave. Un she gave, gave syphilis to her right. own people, the and they didn't. They trusted right. her. Yeah. Why did they trust her? Because the Bible just says, "They which lead thee, cause thee to err." Right. She had an affinity for the white man, and that affinity meant that she had to destroy her own people. Right. So what are we showing you? That the Bible is a real book. Bible, we understand sure the crafty council that is coming. By, matter of fact, get the crafty council and show what is at the root of it. We're located at 1823 Greg Street. What we're teaching is that you are an Israelite. The, you're driving? Okay. So watch this before y'all leave. This is what God calls us from the beginning. These are the names that we wore when God gave it to us. These are the names that we wear now after being infiltrated and destroyed. What is your God-given name? Because that's what you do need to teach your children. You understand? What, what is the God-given name? Benjamin, you're from the West Indies? Okay, what, what, what island? You don't know? Okay, what about you, sis? You, okay, so what is your father? What is your father? Where is your father from? You say African American, or do you know anything about where he's from? Or because our bloodline comes from our father, you understand? So most American blacks would are coming from the tribe of Judah. We are the Israelites. That'd be your tribe. If your forefathers come from the islands of Jamaica, Barbados, the West Indies, you will be from the tribe of Benjamin. And we know those things based off prophecies that are written in the scriptures. And that's what we go into. So when we're talking about children being our oppressors, we see these things right before us. But why do they happen? Because we're breaking God's laws. We went into slavery 
because we're breaking God, we're broken God's laws. We're steadily at the bottom of society because we're continuing to break God's laws. Does that make sense? So what should we do? I'm gonna get y'all one more script and get Acts 3 and 19 before y'all leave. What should we do now that we recognize all the problems? We should be looking for a solution. What is the solution? You got that? Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Bring it up. Repent ye therefore. Repent goes into change. We gotta change our ways, change our mindset, change our attire. You're, be you're better than those pants that the white woman gave you. I'm letting you, and the Bible says that. Deuteronomy 7 to 6. Stay where you at, though. Stay where you at. But read on. Repent, ye therefore, and be converted. And be converted. Read on. That your sins may be blotted out. So, that's what we want. Our sins to be blotted out. That is a sin. You want that blotted out. What should you do? Change. What should you put on? A modest dress. Is that hard? That's not hard. Make sure you don't buy the modest dress on a Sabbath day. Make sure that you don't buy it on a holy day. Right? Make sure that you don't steal the dress, right? Make sure that you put the fringes on the dress. Make sure that you honor God in your being. It's not about the outward adorning. It is about the spirit. But then God gave us a dress code. Is that it on that? Read on. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So isn't it refreshing to understand who we are? and what God requires of us, how we can see our present day situations in the Bible. It's refreshing because now we know there's a solution. You understand that? So that's a quick solution. Lord's willing, y'all do give us a call. My brother right here, what's your name? I didn't get y'all names either. What's your name? Lisa, Janelle. Lord willing, we see y'all at the school, check out that flyer, give us a call. What's your name, bro? Cameron. What's going on, Cameron? What you got? And I'm gonna bring up somebody else in a little bit. What you got? What, what, what? Oh, uh, I like to Oh, on the back of that fly. Watch this. I want Nehemiah 8 and 8. Nehemiah 8 and 8. Because you say you like the way that we teach. Well, all praises to the most high. But we're following the instructions on how to teach the Bible. My brother right here. What's your name, bro? Kobe. Where you from, Kobe? Aiken, South Carolina. So my brother right here. What's your name again? Cameron just said he likes the way we teach. Right. It's, it's all instructed to us in the scriptures. So we're going to show you how we teach real quick. Read. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 8. Bring it up. So they read in the book of the law of God distinctly. So this is how the Bible commands the proper teachers to deal. We got to read distinctly. We got to show our people who they are, what they should and should not be doing. We've been dealing with immodest apparel amongst our women, the effects of immodest apparel, how it destroys our, our, our nation, and then also we can go into the men now. Watch this. Have you ever been in a gang, bro? Ever been influenced to get into a gang? Okay. I know there's, some, there's all kind of stuff going on at Aiken. Have you ever been influenced to go into a gang? All right, all praises. That's not your problem, but do we see that amongst our people? Do, most of, do we see that as a result of single parent households? Oh, we've let me seen talk, don't talk about we've single seen, parent because I was a single parent and I raised, all I raised three boys are you gonna fix and it? they went to that college, that is the problem. They went to high school, and they I, I don't want to have to embarrass you, sis, you but I, you say you want us to deal with the men. You want us to deal with the men? Be quiet. That's what we need you to do. Be quiet. You wanted us to deal with the men 10 minutes ago, but now your mouth open. We trying to deal with the men. But this is a part of the problem. When the mama bear start wailing and crying, now the man can't get fixed. So she's a part no. of the problem. No, you the so problem. We the problem? You the problem. I'm going to show you. Let, you let's, let's show you that you the problem. Proverbs you the problem. 7. I, I ain't you wanted to have to do this. Problem. But watch this. My brother's right here. Sometimes our own mothers, you aunties, grandma are the problem you with the us problem. actually learning God. Right. Watch this. God going God to prove it. You don't think, damn, that dude rough right there. No, God going to prove it. Read. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 9. Yeah. In the twilight, in the evening, in black and dark night. And behold, there met him a woman with an attire of an harlot. So that's what happened with my brother right here, my brother Corey. The scripture we're reading is what's happening right in front of you right now. Corey, what's happening right now is what we're reading in the Bible. Read on. And subtle of heart. She is subtle of heart. She is not smarter than God, but she's subtle in heart to deceive ungodly men. Right. So, Corey, I'm going to say it again. It's happening to you right now. Read on. She is loud. She is loud. Corey, 
Did she not show herself loud just now? I showed did, and you I showed it. And guess what? God I is describing an ungodly man. woman. Man, we want you to fix man. that. You we want you to fix man. it. Or we don't. She is loud and stubborn. And stubborn. And stubborn. So I'm gonna ask you a question, Corey. You're stubborn. If this is the type of woman that becomes our mothers, no, no, yeah. what will become out of us, Corey? If that's the type of woman that we're raised by. Okay. Come on. Say it again. We have a temper. You get that in First Ezra five and eight. I want to make it. All we're doing, Corey, is reading the Bible. This is why my brothers say, "Man, I like the way y'all teach because we're not getting emotional." The godly will show themselves to listen to God. The ungodly will be exactly what the Bible describes them to be: subtle of heart, loud, and in the attire of a harlot. They don't want to repent. Right. That's what the Bible is teaching us in these last days: to repent, change our way, stop living at the bottom of society. Stop, right. stop having that bottom feeder mentality. Right. We are a noble and great people. Right. But as long as we stay in the gutter, that's how we're going to remain. And guess who's ruling over us in the gutter? The same people that's been oppressing us for a long time. Who's tired of that? I'm tired of it. I want to see our brothers raise up and be kings on this earth. Right. That's what we want. But guess who's in our way? Guess who put the, the, the loudmouth black woman on the front line? The white man. We just made, we, we made that clear. So, I'm going to leave that long. I'm going to get off of that. I'm going to get off of that. First Ezra 5 and 8. Second Ezra chapter 5 verse 8. You know what? You know what? You know what? Stop talking about the white people. You have a mind of your own. We have, well, uh, you know what I'm going to get on? I'm going to get on chocolate-covered Edomites. Black folk who have white minds. That's what the problem is. Because God is raising up a noble generation. Right. So watch this, Corey. Read. Second Ezra chapter 5 verse 8 Bring it out. There shall be a confusion Also in many places A confusion the, the, the Bible says that a silent and loving woman Is a gift from God But that loud Loud mouth subtle woman of heart That's not a gift from God That's a white man's creation So what are we reading? We're reading the Bible Corey And we, I just asked you a question Corey I asked you a question Corey <laughs> Corey, this is funny right here. Corey, watch this, watch this. Well, I just asked you the question, what would happen to the children who have a mother like that? You said they would be emotional. They would have a lack of temperament. God knows that. Read on. And the fire shall be offset out again, and the wild beasts shall change their places. So there's disorder amongst the earth right now because we're in sin, but read on. And mistress women. And unclean, ungodly women, read on. Right. Shall bring forth monster hold on how does a woman bring forth a monster the bible just said menstruous women will bring forth monsters how does a woman bring forth a monster she creates a monster in that mindset right when we don't have that godly upstanding righteous woman what happens is we do have gangs in our neighborhood because the young man never learns how to control his temper right. he never learns godly traits right. because all he's seeing is promiscuity learning from TV on TV what do we see shoot him up bang bang what up right. I'm shoot you I'm gonna kill you I'm gonna have sex with your woman I'm gonna run up in your house and kill you right that's and guess who's ruling over those households households that don't have men in them right say it again it is talking to us too because we are the product. We are some of those monsters. They shouldn't have to be loud. Watch this. Not all the time does a father have to yell at his son to make him get in. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes, watch this. My sister over here, you've been listening. You, you ever gave your daughter, they call it the teacher look, but it's really like the mama daddy look. You just gave her a look and she was like, oh, I ain't doing that no more. You don't always have to yell at your children. But where do we learn Where do we learn all the excessive yelling and the over uh, uh, the over uh, exertion of force on our children? We learned it in slavery. Right. So the principles that actually need to be given to us or that we should exhibit we never learned those things from the bible we learned it from the white man who was oppressing us and beating our heads in you see that and that's sometimes how some of our children look when it's just a simple matter we have learned incorrectly but what we're teaching right now and going in the law about distinctly is how to come out of that right we, we're given the solution but well no, we're not us god is giving the solution we're just the messenger of the solution what is nation nation is family nation is community nation
nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. 